ano ai ki aloha e na hoa maka maka o ka aina mai ka hikina o ka la i ha e ha e a hiki lo aku i ka la velo ai molele ka mole ole hua a ma o aku no ai a puni ka honua Aloha, we greet you from wherever you are joining us from all over God's creation, all over his honua. We welcome you to our Pualu Pili Uhane. Wauke ia o hau olia kaka, no kaaina mahiko o waipahu o ahu maiau, ma eva o ahu, no hoau ma kaaina momona o koolau poko o ya hoi o kane ohe i kaua a puakea. Uh, he lai kahi mo o meheu no ho iau ma keia kula nei o kamehameha ma ho o kahua. It's a pleasure to be here today to be a part of this pualu. And pualu is, uh, when I think of the word pualu, I think of round table, talk story kind, you know. And we just came out of a wonderful uh, half hour of fellowship doing our painava kea, our lunch noontime hour with music and fr fellowship and just so much joy mm -hmm. that's still permeating in this space. And uh, I'm so thankful and, and uh, appreciative of Ho Mai Kai Kua to be in the company of the folks you're going to meet in a moment. And all of you, as I look across the pine, I know we have 67 Kanao no Kumahiko joining us today, and the numbers will keep rising because why? Because Kiakua has called us to be together. If this is where you're supposed to be today, and uh, that Iini was nudging at you to hear what is going to be said, it's because that's the Holy Spirit, and we know that. So, e olu olu kako e homaka homalupul kako ike ia manawa me kapule vehe na uno ia kule ana e pule kako e kia kua manaloa komako akua o kia ola komako akua aloha e haliu mai oi ke ia komako pule o nani mililani o me ka ia kui ko ino ai ke ia la ke akua no i no ho i komako o me ka i ke ia ho ako ako ana mai ke kahi ke kahi i loko o ko aloha ko loko me ka i malalo ho i o ko malu e ke akua no leila e ya ku uahi leo o me ka i a o i loko o komako pule e kono no ho i ke ia ia o e ke akua e launa mau mai me ma ko ko uhane he malele e ni 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 mai i ko aloha ko i ke kana awa o me ka ho mau popo i hua pono i mohala mai ka i na hana na olelo o ko makou a wahi pualu i ke ia la. A he wahi noi ke ia e hopo mai ka i mai na ohana, na hoa e kipa mai i ke ia a ko makou hana na i ke ia maa. Kou hana e ke akua. No ka mea nau noi ho o kule ana mai a makou i ke ia la ke ia manawa anō. I na mea e pukain e kahinu mai oi i kalehelehe, ka waha o na kahu i akua koa mai. Kau po e kaua, ai e olu olu ke koe koko mai kahilu mai ia u i moa kaka ko ualaka i ana i ke ia ko ko ualaka i ana i ki pualu e lau na pu mai ko aloha i ke koe kau mai ko aloha pa hola mai ko aloha maluna o na kanaka apau i lau na aku aku mai ma o ke ia puna i vele i ke ia la. A he manawa ke ia ke akua e ho o manao hali aloha i ko mako po e kupu na ko mako ali i na lako i aloha ia oe ke akua. A mamule o ke aloha ko mako po e kupu na ia oe ko lako ho o mana ia oe me ko lako na aua pau ko lako no no man ko lako i keika a pau ke akua e ia no mako i ke ia la na pula pula e ho o nani ho o mana ho o meke i mau ia oe. Ma mulio kahano na kupuna kolako ike kolako na awa no lele kia kua lau na maiko uhane me mako iloko o mako mawaino o no hoyo o kaku a pau ike ia la ihu me ka i ipono ipuka mai ke ia hana elike me ko mak e mak e o ke ia mau me a pau kaku hapa ia oike kia kua ko mako wahi leo mihi ke kahi po kanaka valeno Hema hema ka noa noa, hema hema ka olelo, hema hema, a hewa noa i ko mako hana i ke kahi i ke kahi. Ia oi pū ma ka honua, e hui kala mai, he leo mihi ke ia, e hui kala mai. Ma o kau keiki o Yesu, ma o popo noa e, ma o popo e ia ma ko o lilo o ia i molia o la i mohai no 
Komako ho ola ana, ano le la he wahi leo, ho me ka iho anania oi ki a hui kala ana mai. Mm. I pono, a i pu, e pono no ho e mako hele mamua o ki a kua hapai ke ia mau kule ana e awa mo e like me ko make make. Ano le la e ki a kua, e ho piha mai ya mako i ko aloha ka loko mai ka i. I loko e ki a, e ki a hola ai maulo aku ki a kua, ana hana na pau. A ke pule nei no mako i kei a mau mea a pau i loko ka inoa he molele o ka makua ki kei ki a me ka uhane he molele. Amene. Amene. Ah, Mamoa ka ho alana. Before I introduce our um, panel of kahu who have graciously um, answered their calling in, the, in all that they do in life, but in their being here at this very moment with all of us, uh, we thought we'd open with a way that seems to call to our spirit, and that is through the word through song, and so I'm going to turn and look at one of our kahu who has his pila on hand, and wherever the Holy Spirit leads him, uh, and all of us, we will hear many pualu me oe kahu. And we just mahalo, <clears throat> mahalo, uh, mahalo ya oe kahu for those words. That just the first hoku of Keloha um, Okahaku, or as we lovingly know, the Queen's Prayer. And we know that our Queen uh, composed that Lili Uokalani during her imprisonment at Iolani Palace. So such a poignant and um, perfect choice, yeah, that the Holy Spirit would move you. And you know, and even in that, in that in that prayer, in that himeni, I am reminded at this moment of the humility that our, mm -hmm. our mo'i wahine showed throughout that time of trial and tribulation and throughout her imprisonment. And throughout all of that, there was one thing that she was grounded in, one thing that was sure was her faith in Kiaku, and that's what the words say. Yeah? My nana ino ino na heva o kanaka, akai hui kala, and we will not dwell upon the sins of man and the troubles and how others have transgressed against us, but that we should look to Kiakua for forgiveness and we should exhibit that same forgiveness. So that is the heart of uh, Christian Ali Iwahine, and I bring that to mind because we think of her sister, her Hanai sister, just in the same, Bernice Pawahi, who was a Christian Ali'i, as were her, uh, her maternal. Uh, Makua before her, Kinau, uh, Konia, Lori, Laura Konia. And because they were, and just like you talk about today, the succession of Ike and Kuleana, that Velo Ohana, and that is who they were, yeah, Arali'i. They, Ho'omau, and they continued that Velo and legacy. And even their kupuna, too, the kupuna of Powahi, we know her great grandfather, Kamehameha Paiea, that he, loved with all his heart, his God, and in his own laws, his kanavai mamalahoi, in the opening line, malama oko e kua kua, that you should care and love, take care of your God. And with that, the succeeding generations who chose the God that we choose today, Yehovah, that they would live that same velo and that inherited loina to malama kia kua. And that is why Kamehameha schools that we all serve, all of us sitting before you, is a Hawaiian Christian school. So we're going to have a little conversation in our pualu about that. But Mamo Okela, uh, I wanted to introduce to you. And I'll start with our kahu who led us in our leo himeni. No kailua kona mai oia. Uh, ke noho nei oi nei ma olaa. Uh, me kona ohana oia. Ke kahuna pule no na kula o kamehameha ma kea au hawaii ma olaa. Kahu Brian Kaunaloa Bashard is an alumni of Kamehameha School's Kapalama campus, class of 77. He's the son of Kahu Henry Kanoilani Akiu Boshard, 
who is a graduate of the class of 47 of Kapalama, and his mama, Kahu Iris Uli'i Kanakaole Boshard. Uh, he is married to Kumuhalani Berard, and they together are the makua of four keiki. They are kupuna of two mo'opuna. He grew up in a Hawaiian church, Moku Aikawa Congregational Church, a very historical church in Kailua Kona, directly across the street from Hulihe'e Palace in Kona, where Ke'eli Kolani spent her last days in life. And uh, that afforded him the rich experience in his Hawaiian church, where most members were brilliant, as he describes them, and hardworking OEV, leaders in the community. He learned to sing himeni, recite poku, pule, and participated in the ho'ike, all significant practices of the ekalesia culture that he fondly remembers. And Kahu Kaunaloa began his educational career as a kumu, as a teacher within the DOE in 1994. Then he became an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ in 1998 and has served as a chaplain of Kamehameha School's Kea'au campus in Hawaii since 2015. He proclaims that he is so blessed to be a part of a wonderful team at Kamehameha, together expanding the legacy of Keli Ipawahi, bearing witness to the princess's generosity and her faith in the eyes of our beloved, our blessed Haumana, who we serve. And so he firmly believes, too, that even in the most challenging times, the Keakua Manaloa remains the same loving Akuaola, the living God. So mahalo ya oi, kahu, kaunaloa boshart first on our Pualu today. Next to him, ano nanakuliwai anai mai oine o kahu manu nai ole, ke noho nei oia i kei manawa ma kapalama o ahu, oia ke kahu hou ma ke kula o kamehameha ma kapalama, anointed by God and installed most recently in January as the new chaplain of Kamehameha School's Kapalama campus is kahu manu nai ole. He's excited to return to his alma mater, Kamehameha, where he graduated in just the other day, <laughs> in 1996. He and his very young Ohana, his wife and their new son, uh, now also reside on campus too. In his most recent professional life, it is interesting to let you all know that he too was a kumu. He was a kumu of math, a math teacher at Kapole High School and Nanakuli High as well. And he currently now serves also as the Kahuna Pule, the Kahu of Kalihi and Moanalua Church on Oahu. He's been a youth pastor at my church, Kamakapili Church, and also at Community Church of Honolulu. He grew up and he worked in the Hawaiian homestead communities where he grew up in Waianae, in Kapolei. He serves Jesus, he says, in an authentically Christian and authentically Hawaiian way. And it's always been his desire to have that way of life. And he confesses that he doesn't always get everything right and he doesn't know all the answers, but along the way, he hopes to help others who are attempting the same journey with Yesu Christo, who can help him get it right. <laughs> Mahalo to our youngest kahu on our panel today, and probably the most nervous, yeah, kahu, but my haalulu oe, kahu manu, because everything's all good. Po mai kai na mea kau. To my immediate right, <clears throat> My dear friend, Hoa Aloha, and she asked that I not introduce her first, I think because we're going to get Oha Alulu and Uwe Paha, because <laughs> we've been together so many years uh, and so many ventures, not just uh, in this light, but as Makua as well. E kela kani aupi o crochet. No hale halava uka o ahu mei oia. Ke noho nei oia i kei maula ma wai ehu maui. Hana oia ma nakula o kamehameha ma aapue o maui. Ekele is a Hawaiian culture-based education coordinator for Halau Kapikoha Nai Maalama at Kamehameha School's Maui campus. She is also the Hopekahu of Ekalesia Okupayana Church in Wailuku. She was blessed to have been raised in a home and a church where Olelo Hawaii was still spoken by her kupuna, and traditional ways of knowing were still practiced. Ekela's maternal grandmother was the Reverend Ethel Kauhi Keaunui Crawford, and she spoke to her in her olelo makuahine, in her mother tongue from birth, believing that one day Ekela would awamo, the kuleana of perpetuating olelo Hawaii for future generations. 
Ekela has been sharing this gift since 1978 with thousands of Haumana through, our, through her program, Kulaivi, a distance learning Hawaiian language program that we can still find on YouTube after all these years. And the hair color was different. <laughs> but the heart was still the same. Also, cool, um, many of you might have uh, explored and found in recent years Duolingo, a language app. I know I, I play with it every day, and she has been a part in that development. And also, in many other spaces, she has taught pre-K through 12, and also at the University of Hawaii system. Olelo Hawaii, she says, deepened and broadened her insight and her understanding of Mo'omeheu and Nohona Hawaii, Hawaiian culture and our lifestyle. And therefore, she finds it a blessing to be able to share this ike with all of us. And she is Makuahine of Three Keiki and the Kupunahine of Three Mo'opuna. So, mahalo, my darling, for being here with us today. Kahu hope kahu ekela kani opio krosham. And last but never the least, next to her, also from Ma Maui representing today, and they flew in. And you know, I have to say that I think we're the only uh, panela or the only uh, panel today that's um, live and in person in face. Am I correct? Yeah. So that's a blessing in itself that Keokua would open the way that we can all be here from Maui, from Hawaii Island. And so Kahu Kalani Wong, who flew in this morning from Maui, but I can't know, I know Palolo or Ahu Mai Oya. Uh, noho oya i keia manawa, ma wai luku maui, uh, me, kana, me kona ohana. Hana noho i oya, ma ke kula o Kamehameha, ma aapueo maui. He's been the chaplain at Kamehameha's uh, Maui campus since 2002. Wow, kahu, 20 years already. He is an alumni of Kamehameha, class of 74, Kapalama. Uh, he strives to ground his haumana in Christian faith as Napua Pawahi, and he is an ordained minister in good standing, he says, with the Aha o na Mokupuni o Maui, Molokai Mela Nai, in our Hawaii Conference, the United Church of Christ. And so, mahalo. And he's, oh, I'm going to put you on the spot because I didn't have this 411 Ike. Ehia keiki, ehia mo'opuna, because we know that you two have keiki and mo'opuna, since we I, shared that I, about everyone else. I have two sons and four grandchildren. Ah, oh yeah, there you go. Ulu, ulu ka, ulu, olo, ola na ikaivi, olo kaha, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh my, and I think I said Ulu, that's the Holy Spirit to say, not Pau yet, going to keep growing and flourishing. <laughs> so mahalo, ya oko apau nakahu, that brings so much grace to um, today's talk story, our Pualu. And so, you know, as we um, know that we're here, and we're all called to here for that reason, we think about um, some years ago, Ekela and I were a part of a series and annual, each year um, that on the campus at Kapala, and we invited the Kahu, they were also part of that, as we explored our Hawaiian Christian values as a, as a school and what is the mission in the, of, of our Kel Ipawahi that we all uphold in, as we, with regards to Pili Uhane. And what Uhane is that we Pili to? Ka Uhane Hemolele. That's what her wish really was. And so this question, uh, this was a theme for years, Kelly Ipawahi, unashamedly Hawaiian and unapologetically Christian. So we're going to capitalize on that title today. And that's going to be my first Nino and question to each one of our kahu today. And I'm going to start on that end. We're going to start from oh, Hawaii and we'll go all the way to Ni'ihau. Okay? So hikino, my kahikino kala. So kahu, I ask you this question. And in, and in your um, response, you know, it, you c consider how we bring into and what that means, and what that, did that mean for the generations before you, your kupuna, mm. your mo'au kala, all that we talked about in your introduction, those who paved the way before you in who you are today. So, Kahu, what does it mean to be unashamedly Hawaiian and unapologetically Christian? Where does your faith come from? Yeah, wow, what a great question to begin with. And, um, <laughs> and a great person. <laughs> and I'm going to pass this on to Kahu Kala. No. <laughs> Growing up in Kona was, uh, as I mentioned before, it was exciting. And, but even before then, my parents, uh, that's all we knew was Yesu growing up. I didn't know any other uh, way of moving. Pule was consistent uh, all day. And so 
as we got interested in asking questions, uh, it became apparent that their faith came from their makua. My both parents grew up in Kau, and my father, his grandmother, who he used to, and grandfather, who he used to stay with in Kau, and so he can go fishing down in Punalu'u. She was also uh, the kahu at uh, Halipuleo Hoku uh, Lea Aloa, uh, right at Nidole. And, and you can, the church is still there. But she was also an educator, and that's where my father learned to read. <laughs> then the Baibala, it was all in Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, they would meet every Sunday faithfully. And sometimes it would just be the two of them, which would be the longest ones. I don't know why. Uh, how did that work? But it, just the two of them. And so he was immersed in knowing Jesus, knowing the Word of God, uh, blessed by it. And uh, today he's 93. He's still working on Mala. He's, he's my hero and my faith hero. And uh, when he met my mom, uh, who, who is living, he, she's a Kanakoli, they grew up in Kapapala, which is right above in the ranch area. Um, the way they would do it is they would bring the fish up and drop it off, and then they would take... Uh, back some of the produce that was being grown there, or PP, or whatever. And uh, that relationship began early. But both were just in love with Jesus. And so it was Amen. a match made in heaven. Amen. So as we grew up as a family, uh, with my brother and my two sisters, uh, well, my sisters and my two sisters, it was apparent that uh, worship, uh, on Sundays especially, uh, that was a guarantee, and I look forward to it. Like I had mentioned before, I could see all my friends. We all had the same uh, unity, and uh, it was blessed that way. And we were all Hawaiians. So I didn't realize that there was a difference, honestly. Still don't, but uh, <laughs> we, that's how we grew up. And some of, one, of, one of the heroes, at, uh, faith heroes at uh, Moku Aikau, I still can see her. Uh, so, Auntie uh, Malawi Hili. And uh, mm -hmm. for those who know her, uh, oh, she's yeah. she amazing. And uh, mm -hmm. was blessed to just listen to her, and she would sing. She had the most beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And she was so powerful in her leo. It, it was Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And yet, culturally, she practiced everything that she knew that was pono and um, really was a kahu for a long time mm. in this uh, ahupua'a that uh, is a kohanaiki. And um, mm. still to this day, I, I just, when I talk to the family and to her, uh, uh, her sons, uh, I always bring it up. I said, man, if I'm at a blessing, I'm asking auntie to do the pule, and she <laughs> would go up there, and everybody would be just amazed, mm. just amazed at the power and uh, the commitment that she had in her faith. So we learned from those kind of people who were just committed, mm -hmm. faithful, diligent, did good mm -hmm. things. And we're not perfect, didn't matter, mm -hmm. but we tried to be Christ-like in all that we did. So Amen. that's pretty much it. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I'm just Hawaiian. <laughs> I love Jesus. <laughs> uh, and we praise God for that. Mahalo kahu for sharing your mo'olelo. And that's the thing about today uh, that I failed to mention that it's really an opportunity for us to really get to know our spiritual leaders of Kikulo Kamehameha, but not just our school, but our community. And when we hear their mo'olelo and their, of their kupuna, their makua, such names as Auntie Maluihili, many of us know her as that master weaver, Ulana Lauhala, no kona. Yeah, and these folks that had faith and were very strong in their faith as well in the church. Um, before I, I'm going to skip over to this side because then this side will pay attention, yeah, when, they, when we come right over here. <laughs> but before we koho, before the Holy Spirit koho, which one? <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, aloha, send a shout out to our folks who are joining us. Uh, it seems like today um, the congregation of Kaleseo Kupayanaha is strong in, uh, in viewers. Really? And so sending much aloha from your, your kahu, Mama Kanani Franco is uh, with us today. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, and so get ready because you're going to speak to that in just a moment. <laughs> and uh, many others, uh, the Francisco Galdera Ohana sends their aloha as well. And uh, even your own Keiki is uh, viewing right now. So aloha to all of you. Mahalo. Kalauna anamai. So mama, hope kahu o kaikalisia o kupayana. 
where does your faith come from again? How would you answer that? And share your mo'olelo. I know I said a lot about you already, but <laughs> this mo'olelo of being unashamedly Hawaiian and unapologetically Christian and not knowing that there was any difference growing up. Speak to that. Hikino, mahalo. And mahalo i ka mo'olelo, ka um, I feel like I lived that mo'olelo. <laughs> you were Boy, probably in my youth group. But, um, <laughs> but um, I was, so I was born and raised in to Ho'omanao Ke Ko'ola, um, of which we have six churches. The mother church is here in Kalihi on Mokawea Street. And then we have Ka'uhanehemolele o Kamala Malama, which is in Keokaha. Mm -hmm. Ke Akuamana in Waimea, Ke Kalamai Ke Maulua in Waimea, Ke Akuamana in Kapa'a, Kauai, um, and Amolokai, Jerusalem, Apomaikai. Little did I realize that I would end up on Maui, as Ke Akua would have it. It's the best move that he's made for me, <laughs> um, and become the Hopekahu of Ekalesio Kupayanaha, which is in Wailuku. Um, being raised in the church, I, I, everything you were saying, I, it resonated because I didn't know that there was, there were even Hawaiians who didn't believe in God. I just thought all Hawaiians believed in God. Um, and coming from the mother church, which which can house 400 people, mm. I saw Hawaiians every week in that way, and it was. Monday night, Papa Olelo, <laughs> Tuesday, Ha'ewanelio, Wednesday, Halavai Makuakane, Thursday, we had kind of off, I think. But Friday, Halavai Makuahine, Saturday, you was there cleaning church. So church, church, church. I, you know, we, we lived at church, and, and all my friends I grew up with were from church, friends that I still have to today, um, that I love with all my heart because they believe the way I believe. Um, but you know, being raised in a Hawaiian church, um, I, I think is is different for um, th than what people think church is, I guess. Um, because there's plenty of aloha, it's ohana, it's um, everybody know everybody, and everybody is responsible for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, we have kuleana to malama each other, and yet we came from all over the island, you know, oahu. I mean, as far as Waianae is from Waimanalo, Kahana, all those areas, that everyone came from all over, where they had to catch bus or mm -hmm. catch ride, everybody showed up. And and it was Olelo, you know, that um, that raised me really in that church. Um, you know, my my story is blessed um, because my grandmother made a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, my auntie, my mother's sister, who's right below her, um, had an affliction, skin affliction, and someone told my grandma, um, "You go to this church; they're a healing church." You know, and she went ho'olohe, and she went. Um, prior to that, she was actually going to another church, but she went there, and she stayed. And it was there that um, she raised 11 kids in that church, my mother being the hiapo. Um, and then there was plenty of activities, yeah, for us to huipu with other churches. So whether it was ho'ike or pai'aina, um, you know, you got to meet other people. Well, that's where my mother met my father. Because his, his mother founded Lanakila Church in Kaimuki on Tente Mauna Lake. So if you go to that, you go to Lanakila Church, that's my ohana. Um, but my father left there, to, there, left there to be with my mother. Um, you know, interesting, yeah, that was real biblical, right? <laughs> he will leave his ohana to follow his way. Um, and so it was really the church that brought them together, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, and through my life, I've been blessed to see many, many miracles, mm -hmm. you know, and one of which that I'll share with you because it really is the part that turned my faith at 13. Um, my father had had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't talk, he couldn't walk, he didn't know his name. He, I, there was a lot that had happened in that time. And the doctor told him, well, you know, you're gonna, um, you're gonna have to go to rehab. And he looked at my mother and he just looked at her and he, and he shook his head. And she said, oh, he doesn't wanna go. And the doctor says, oh, no, no, but that's where he has to go. She says, no. She looked at him and she says, you want me to take you home? Mm. And he nodded and his tears fell. And she said, I'll take you home. And she took him home, and for one month, she sat with him daily 
I saw the love of God planted into this woman to sit there with him and to, he would, I would come home from school, he had his license in one place, he had his check, a, a pay stub in another place, <laughs> and some of my weekly reader books, I don't know if anybody remembers weekly reader books, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. but those things were there and she would sit and remind him, this is who you are, honey, mm. this is your name, and this is where you work, Beautiful. and this is, and then they would read, and every day I saw him get better and better. Within one month, he walked back into church. Now prior to that, he was the hanging out on the couches. We all walked out the door to go to church, saying, pray for me. That's, that, that was him. After that experience, of course, after that one month, he saw what God could do. Amen. We saw what God could do. And I think that's how God works, right? He doesn't work for just the problem you see in front of your face. He is working to serve others, too. So we became a family that, whose faith got stronger and, and Kekua became more real, you know? Yeah. And so um, he walked into church whole, like nothing had happened. People who had seen him before and what he had gone through couldn't believe it, mm -hmm. you know? But it was a moment where I recognized the power of Kekua in our Halepule. Mm -hmm. and, and the Olelo was the, the, that vehicle that mm -hmm. helped me understand the vai vai mm -hmm. of olelo. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can say things in English in a church, mm -hmm. but when you hear it, mako olelo hawaii, mm -hmm. it just hits you in a na'au mm -hmm. and you, you feel it in a different way because it means mm -hmm. different things, you know? And, um, you know, you and I have had that conversation. But as far as being unashamed, I didn't know there was something to be ashamed about. As far as being unapologetic, I didn't know I needed to apologize for this. As time has gone on, we see what's happening in our world and in our Hawaii, and people don't understand who this God is. And I pray for our people that they will know what we know, which is, when the gates of heaven open, <laughs> as my mama Ella would say, yeah, she always say our, our kahu that I grew up with when I was a little girl. She says, you know, those gates of heaven are going to open and you're going to hear aloha. <laughs> and I think from that, I realized, yeah, God is Hawaiian, you know. But um, it, our church was founded by John Wise. And I think this is a, a very important piece mm. of my uh, oh yeah. my own yes. walk. Tell that story. Having a, a church that was founded by um, a loyalist who was in prison for the queen sets us up to be a little different, you know, mm. in that Amen. we're a little yeah. radical Amen. to protect who we are <laughs> as Kanaka. Um, we we are Hawaiian. We we don't we're not confused and we're not conflicted and we don't. People always ask me how do you reconcile being Hawaiian and being Christian? I don't reconcile it. I am Hawaiian and I am Christian and I don't have a problem with it because I never did and never will. You know and I pray that I I've raised my children to understand that and that they will be a new generation yeah. of those who know God and love God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. But Amen. Kalamai, that was a long answer to that oh, question. No, no, <laughs> okay. My, okay. The spirit Told you we would stay on this one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> can, we can. But you know. You got your fan club too, so you got to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pakana, oh, Dali Mahalo, that testimony always touches my heart, no matter how many times I have heard it. But you know, you said something, you touched on to something so important and about Olelo. So many of you know Ekela and I in that light as, um, you know, Kumu Olelo Hawaii, as Makua, who have chosen years ago that our children and our family would Olelo Hawaii. Mm. And um, I praise God that one of those places where our Olelo Hawaii never died and continued mm. to live was in our Halepule and such. And, um, you know, one particular Halepule that came to mind as you were speaking, and so that pointed to me who our next speaker will be that we will hold on <laughs> is that Halepule where um, here on Oahu where the first Punanaleo or Honolulu was open and that is Kalihi and Moanalua church and um, you know and I, I it was there that Ekela's uh, oldest daughter Keonilei was um, a haumana in the first years, and it opened in the mid mid fifties. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe you were in your mid fifties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back in eighty five, eighty six, around yeah. that time. And then shortly after, you know, my wife and I decided that we would send our keiki there too at Punanaleo Honolulu, and uh, just 
you know, we just saw Omeka Ikea Kua, that although the kumo of that kula, the, the church said, I, komo mai, come, we will open our, this is important, the Olel Hawaii, we will open this church for your school. And of course, the kumu came from Ni'ihau, our pioneer kumu, and Lolena Nicholas, uh, Ipo Kanahele at that time, and uh, Uluchak. But I want to do that segue as I introduce to you and, and pose this question to our youngest kahu, because he serves now as a kahu of that church. And many of and it's a small congregation, as I know, but um, you should we should all know that I think is here's a good example of God's calling and it's a testimony because here he today is the chaplain of Kamehameha Schools, Kapalama. But one of the loyal kupuna of his church and his family, the Kaupu family, David Kaupu, worships there at Kalihimonalua. Mm -hmm. And Mo'opuna have been students of Puna Naleo and our Hawaiian Immersion School. So I want to um, pose this question to you, Kahu, who comes from the homestead there in Waianae, <laughs> Kahu Manu, to speak to being Hawaiian. And I think in your introduction, we alluded to your, your, what you profess already, being a Hawaiian Christian. So how, where does that come from, your faith? Well, I think just, <clears throat> I mean, I'm just in amazement, really, of this, the mo'olelo that have been shared already. And I was thinking about my grandparents, um, and so on my mom's side, both my grandparents could speak Hawaiian, but they were, I don't, for whatever reason, they um, just never passed it down to, to my mom uh, and to her sisters. Um, and my mom said they could always tell when they were fighting because they would always fight in Hawaiian because <laughs> that way nobody would understand what they were fighting about. Um, but even though that wasn't something that they had passed down to us, um, and this goes for both sides, and I'll share a little bit about my dad's family in a little bit. Um, but just the the values, I never knew it, un understood it at the time, but the values and the things that they held as important uh, were very much located in their understanding of who they were as Hawaiian people. Uh, my grandma, they eventually my, my grandparents moved into Nanukuli and they were, were living on homestead when my mom and them were growing up. But my grandma was uh, really active in the community. Um, at one point had started a preschool or had been part of a group that started a preschool. Uh, but it came out of her love and her sense of aloha for, for the people, for Hawaiian people, uh, for the people of Nanukuli. And it's something that just innately passed down through all of us. Uh, so my mom retired as a educational assistant uh, in the DOE system. Uh, but she spent most of her time working at Nanukuli High School after graduating from Nanukuli. Uh, my sister was also a teacher. She was an elementary teacher, but her very first job was actually working at Nanukuli Intermediate as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I made my way uh, back into the community. Uh, but it all stemmed from grandma's understanding of, mm -hmm. of taking care of her Hawaiian community. And even though uh, we were disconnected in ways, uh, we still remain connected very much in her love for, for people and her love for mm -hmm. the people of Hawaii. Uh, on my dad's side, my, grandpa, my grandma passed away before I was born, so I didn't know her at all. Uh, but my grandpa, who was the grandparent that we were the closest to because we lived with him, or yeah, we lived with him. It was his house and we helped take care of grandpa. Mm -hmm. But he, um, he always had this reverence for God, even though he never went to church. But he, he loved playing cards. And so by the time we were like 12, we all knew how to play all those gambling games that families <laughs> sit around and play. Because that's what you he, to keep him company, right? He would teach us, he would sit us down and say, you have to learn how to play with me because I need people to play with me. And so he would teach us all these games and he would teach us how to play. And he would go to his friend's house, my dad's friend's house. They would go every weekend, every Friday night. And I still remember they would let me play even though I was like seventh grade. And they would let me sit at the table with them and play. And everybody would get mad because I, I didn't understand that you have to stay at the table the whole time. So I would play and then win, and then I would dig up. And everybody would yell at me. And my grandpa said, ah, leave him alone. He don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but the one thing that I remember most about my grandpa is uh, on the, the evenings that he did well, he would always give us, give us some money. But he would always tell us, don't put this in the church offering. I said, why? He said, because that's the devil's money. He said, I was doing devil stuff to get that money. <laughs> so don't put that in the, in the offering bowl. And it was his understanding of, of, even though he didn't have that formal thing when we think about what does it mean a Christian, like going to church and being in Bible study. And, and none of that, 
none of that resonated with him and who he was as a person. Mm -hmm. But he still had that reverence for, for Kelkua and that mm -hmm. respect for God that, that there were certain things that, that for him that were secret <laughs> and he wanted to hold as secret even though he didn't understand mm -hmm. what that meant. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, you know, in, in Wayanai and then up at Kamehameha, um, I, I was always surrounded by people who looked like me. Like, I, I never <laughs> understood living in a world where people didn't look like me until I went to college. And then I remember actually I was talking about grandparents and I was telling my friend about my grandpa and telling her all these stories. And she was like, wow, you sound really close to your grandpa. And I go, well, I hope so. I lived with him. And she was like, wait, what? And it just weirded her out that I lived with my grandpa. And I was like, wait, you mean you don't live with your grandparents? And she was like, no. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. I was like, because growing up in Waianae, right, everybody lived in multi-family homes. Oh, and everybody yeah. lived in multi-generational homes, homes and cared for each other that way. And uh, so as I think about my, my kupuna, although none of them ever sat me down and said, let's read the Bible. None of them ever sat me down and said, let's pray together or let's sing church songs together. Uh, it is their, their value and their ethics and their belief in, in the things that they did that carried on in us, that without realizing it, it was uh, Keokua's way of mm -hmm. uh, weaving us together and molding us into uh, who we've become uh, for me and for both of my sisters. Awesome. Uh, and so, so that's what I think about. When I think about what did your grandparents teach you or what did your kupuna teach you, I think about sitting at the table and learning lessons of how to observe what everybody's doing and how to watch. Uh, and it, it was never done in in a church setting, but those are still the things that I carry as a as a kahu now. Mm. Uh, those are still all the values that I hold and that I think are are important for me to, to continue to exercise and to carry on uh, their legacy today. Mahalo e kahu manu. Ola naivi, yeah? You know, um, as you were speaking about grandpa, that, that's your nai ole side, yeah? Mm -hmm. That's your paternal side. So many of us know the word nai ole and uh, our history was kahu uh, malama, yeah? Uh, for Kamehameha Pai, yeah. And I recall you, and this just came back to me, the story you shared about when you were young at Kamehameha. And I think this is so prophetic when you think of it. Um, kahu, at the time, the chaplain was uh, David Kaupu, and there was a blessing of a new space, I think it was the gym at the elementary yep. school. Yeah, Tell us about that day gym. and what yeah. Kahu did, his choice, uh, what the role you played that day as a young keiki. And when you think about it, it's prophetic because it's almost like God was preparing you for where you are today now over there. So yeah. talk about that, Mr. Naiole. Yeah, so one of my best friends, uh, his name is Jason Kaneko. We were in the same kindergarten class. And Jason's now an assistant uh, band director up at Kapalama. And he was actually the one that reminded me. He said, remember in elementary when you had to do that blessing? And I was like, um, I do now. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the elementary school gym was brand new when I was in elementary. And I think it was fourth or fifth grade. But because of who Naiole was in the Kamehameha story, uh, Kahu Kaupu, uh, I don't know, somehow he figured out that we were Naioles and Naioles are connected to Kamehameha schools. And so he invited us. Me and my sister, my younger sister was also at Kamehameha at that time. Uh, so the two of us got to do the untying of the maile uh, <laughs> as the gym opened, as a, they did the opening blessing. Mm. Uh, but my friend Jason told me, he said, you know, he said, when you started getting into ministry, he said, that's all I could think about. And when <laughs> I got the job at Kamehameha, he said, it's like full circle, Manu. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's oh, beautiful. <laughs> love that mo'olelo. It's good affirmation. Yeah. Mahalo nui, kahu manu. Again, we so appreciate getting to know all of you so much better. And so there's one more kahu here today to share his mo'olelo as we talk about uh, unashamedly, unapologetically. And so kahu kalani wang, would you share your mana'o, your mo'olelo? Hey, mahalo for giving me the opportunity. Uh, my testimony begins with, and I've always written it down for uh, different situations, my ordination ceremony, my ecclesiastical council, just always, I was born in the pews. But I was born in the pews of First Chinese Church, mm. where my parents were very active members. My dad sang in the choir, was on the church board. Uh, my mom was more active in the kitchen. Mm. You know, she was always the hands behind the scene kind of thing. Um, and when I look back 
you know, I, I didn't know my Hawaiian side. And hearing all the stories, you know, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks of little ways that Keokua was tapping me on the shoulder about who I am as a Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated in 74, right before the, the whole Hawaiian Renaissance started happening. Mm -hmm. So as far as the Hawaiian side, that was kind of suppressed. Um, my, my paternal grandmother lived with us, and she was um, half Hawaiian. And I remember she would always speak to me in Hawaiian. And being the lolo kid that I was, I told her, Grandma, speak English. I don't know Hawaiian. Um, and it, it, I knew it hurt her because after that, she stopped talking to me. Um, and I thought about it when I was a sophomore that I wanted to know about my Hawaiian side. Mm -hmm. But by that point, she was at Luni Lilo home. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't really you know, share. So my greatest losses was that connection. Mm -hmm. But my godmother was the church secretary. She's the one who named me. Um, she's the one who always kept an eye on me because I was a gym rat at the church. You know, growing up in the church, um, basketball, volleyball. Uh, when I uh, was catching the bus home from Kapalama, I would stop off at the church. Um, my dad would always leave my, my change of clothes on the pew, so I'd go say hi to auntie. Um, and she always had a job for me to do. The boy, you can go next door to the apartment and go clean the bathroom. <laughs> clean the bathroom? Yeah, 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 the stuff right there, just clean the bathroom. So, you know, you listen to your elders. <laughs> so I go clean the bathrooms. Next time I come, hey boy, you can go do this. You know, so, um, but she, and now that I'm on this side, I saw how she was preparing me for the sense of alaka you love lave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And about just, you listen to your kupuna. And along the way, she started guiding my life into an understanding of how to be a Hawaiian without using the Hawaiian words, about being the spirit of um, aloha, about building pilina, about mm -hmm. you know, connecting with our kupuna. So I had, you know, although I didn't have the connection to my, my tutu, I had it through my, my godmother, mm -hmm. my auntie Lei. Um, and she, she never, never stopped guiding and I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Even to the point of ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I had I wanted to just give up. I had grown up in the church, you know, going through the youth group, um, coming to the point of where I had people who breathed life into me and says, Hey, you gotta help lead the youth group. So I began to lead the youth group and I got so burnt out of just giving, giving, giving. Um, that one day I went to see Auntie Leia to her. You know, I don't know if I can do it anymore. I, I think I'm gonna go to another church. And I'm going to find another place that maybe I can just be me. Mm -hmm. She told me, boy, stop it right there. You go to God's word and let him speak to you. Mm -hmm. So I just went out to my, um, to my bag, my, my gym bag, which is right on the pew, right outside her <laughs> office. Break out the Bible, flip it open, put my finger down. You know how that goes. First Peter 4.10. Mm -hmm. If anyone speaks, let him speak the very words of God. If he, when he serves, let him serve with the strength that God provides. So then all things, God may praise through, through Jesus Christ. Amen. And that cut, cut to my soul and saying, I'm doing everything for me, not for him. Hmm. And that was a sense of, um, as we do things for others, it is because we're doing it as God's servant, hmm. as, as his hands. Yeah, that's that's, what, that's yeah. what Auntie Lei was yeah. trying to teach me. That I'm not doing it for me, but I'm doing it because God needs somebody to do these things. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that really spoke to me so much mm -hmm. so that my, my perspective changed. Mm -hmm. I stayed there. I, I did what I, God guided me to. And that's where, just through her nudgings, um, ministry became a possibility. Mm -hmm. Full-time ministry. Um, and it was something that I, I look back with, with humility, with, with all humbleness, because God guided that situation of where I was going to just head off into other areas, but he guided me back. And, mm -hmm. and so many ways along, you know, as I reflect back on my life, and that's the best way to see things, 
2020 hindsight because mm -hmm. you begin to see how God caused all things to work out for his glory. Amen. 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 Yeah. And um, so many paths that I had taken that he mm -hmm. says, brother, no, you know, <laughs> Get back over no, here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and he threw up dead ends <laughs> in my life. He threw up detours in my life, but he always kept nudging me in that path. So I am now, mm -hmm. you know, so Mahalo Kea Kua for that, right. that presence is, and I think one of the things that really hit home for me as far as my, my culture, my faith is part of it being at Kumbahama School as a chaplain, mm -hmm. uh, and helping people see faith through the culture and culture through their faith. But when it fully came together was when I was asked to be a representative at the, um, the apology statement mm -hmm. that the United Church, Church of Christ made to the Hawaiian people mm -hmm. on January 17, 1993, yeah. Yeah. on the bandstand at Iolani Palace. And standing there with my fellow Hawaiian kahu uh, right in back of our president of our denomination. Standing there and thinking, brother, I'm gonna get shot. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm gonna get praised. Not, not I get praised, but God be praised. That we are taking the right step to show that as, as, a, as a church, mm. we need to apologize to our people. Mm. And here I am as one of the people mm. being a part of that. Mm. That to me was one of those landmark moments in my life mm. and helped me to see how we can be both, mm. you know. Yeah. So. Thank you. Amen, Kahu. Uh, I tell you, um, so much affirmation and so much uh, gratitude and appreciation. Um, Mama Kahu Kanani Franco is so grateful for your kupuna and for your mentors, and she gives her mahalo to you too, Kahu Kalani. And uh, also we have this uh, beautiful uh, affirmation of aloha from Le Zapo. Such beautiful mo'olelo that you share. Mahalo nui to all of you for this sharing. I'm going to take us on a turn now. And instead of that question that we was kind of ready to answer the next question, I'd like to um, just honor this. And it's the Holy Spirit. And I just want to say aloha to uh, Sherry Goldera. Any of you know Sherry Goldera? Yeah. So Sherry has a really good question. So mahalo ya oi, Sherry, for this Nino that's come in our pahu kole kole, our chat. Hi, Sherry, says Mama Kahu here. <laughs> yeah, so, and I, I think I know you're setting her up for the answer. That's why you went answer the question. And because we've had conversations about this before, my darling. And it is this <laughs> Nino that Sherry um, uplifts, and anyone can jump in, not only you. And it is this, she says, and asks, was Akua's presence acknowledged amongst our Hawaiian people pre-arrival of the mission man? So before the coming of the Mikianali, was did our people know Kekua already? What you say? <laughs> <laughs> you said hi, Sherry. Now you gotta talk to her. <laughs> well, you know, no, I, I, you know how I feel about this oh, and yeah. what I believe about this. That, um, Number one, I believe that we're one of the lost tribes of Israel. You know, that is like, I mean, where, you know, our cow used to say, where did he not go? When he was walking with the Lord and he was taken, where did he go? Where did he end up? He must have landed here. Um, and because there's a strong sense when you look at our history and you look at little things, um, you know, the mahi ole, let's take that for example, you mm. know, the, the shape of it, or the ahu, or the, the, the way the ahu is built, you know, um, the lele that's built. These things that are part of our culture um, bear a lot of similarity mm. to what was happening in Israel, in Egypt um, at the same time. Um, words that we use mm. that, you know, I, I, I don't ever um, diminish the value of the word mana because I think of manna, right, that came from heaven. That's why, you know, sometimes people like mm -hmm. to say, you know, and they say it to me, right? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it's such a mana wahine. I, I, I rebuke that. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I hold no mana. None of us do as kanaka. That mana belongs to Keakua and to him alone. And he, and he, we just, the uh, messages, right? We just put the mail in a box. We don't write the letter. I keep on trying to tell people that. That we are given opportunities to bring his mana into spaces. But us as 
Kanaka, we don't have that. And our people truly understand that. You know, when you look at the words that we have in our language um, that describe Kekwa, um, it's, it's really obvious to me, and maybe it's because of the way I've been raised, that um, Kekwa resided in our hearts long yep. before 1820. We knew things, we, we understood. Our connection to Aina and Kanaka, that aloha, is definitely what comes from Keakua. That is not of man, mm -hmm. to be able to love beyond ourselves, you know? That it came naturally for mm -hmm. us to mm -hmm. embrace people when they come to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, when we talk about that word aloha, it's, it's unconditional. Gets us into trouble a lot of times. <laughs> but Kekua gives us a way out. And if, I, if we would only understand that as Kanaka, mm -hmm. that that's the way out, is the way that we got ourselves into Pilikia, mm -hmm. is aloha. Oh, yeah. you know, so that whole idea of kapua aloha, I buy it. That's Jesus. Mm -hmm. you know? that, that idea of aloha is pervasive from the very beginning of time for Hawaii to today. Mm -hmm. You know, and we just got when we when we don't allow that to be in our hearts, that's when we become yeah. like the enemy. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so we have to maka Allah mm -hmm. that we hold on to that that is so old. Mm -hmm. You know, it mm -hmm. and it's who we are as Kanaka. Mm -hmm. And I think when you know, I listened to your story, Manu, about your grandpa. Mm -hmm. There's a knowing. That's right. You know, yeah. there's a knowing in our people that God resides in our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, and. The, the, it's that it's that um, thing that goes on in our now, oh, mm -hmm. you know, that we know. I, I tell people all the time, Hawaiians can walk into a room and read it immediately. <laughs> you know, they've zoned in to what's going on and know how to work it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kekua. Mm -hmm. You know, but we we forget to acknowledge oh, where yeah. that comes from. But oh, it's yeah. old. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope that's not, you know, but that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, I feel free, uh, our other kahu, to chime no, in. I think it's a sense of just being. Mm -hmm. um, and I think when the, when the missionaries came, they brought the language. Mm -hmm. But the thought of understanding and knowing, yeah, sure. the Hawaiians knew. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So okay. maybe that's where people tend to say, well, God wasn't there. Well, God was there, just that when the Bible came, that's when mm -hmm. those terms came to place. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But the knowing was the other thing. Amen. Uh, agreed wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. When God created us, it's it, this, you know, so my, my father's 93, right? And he's still driving. But because he's 93, I put a GPS in his car <laughs> so I know where he is and when he comes home. And we're created with the GPS already. We, God knows where we are, where we're going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of, uh, like you said, right? We know. Um, it was easier for our people then to know who by name. Mm -hmm. And that is the power of words and olelo. And, uh, and thank God it was, um, you know, the words was translated out of the Hebrew and, and, and the Greek because it, it made more sense for them. So you talk about etymology, you know, you, you just, you find all those connections in the words and powerful. And kind of like we, we always knew who we were when we were growing up. It's so funny. By the way, I used to play Paiute with my grandmother. Teaching. <laughs> you know, we all did. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? It was the grandparents who were teaching us, oh, come, we're going to play. Uh, well, yeah. But <laughs> it, it's just knowing. And we just get distracted at times. Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah. But when we are together, in this room, I mean, if you were to just put a camera in a room when we came together, you know, the the pili that we have is kiakua within us, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, you know, we know only a little bit, mm. right? But uh, God knows everything. Yeah. This is too yeah. much for us to try and overthink. Yeah. And what we know is that uh, love conquers all, mm -hmm. and when we continue to rejoice in the Lord, give thanks in every condition, any condition, mm -hmm. uh, the blessing that comes is in the belief, 
right? It's in the belief. But that belief, who's the belief? Kyakwa, Yesu. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Oof. Get out of the way and just <laughs> follow it. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust <laughs> and obey. Amen. And you know, There's no if, other way. If you, when you look at the language, it's a lot of language mm -hmm. that, that proves this kind of knowing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think of, I, I've heard people say, well, you know, who is the God Io? You know, I wasn't raised in a church that knew God as that. We knew him as Jehovah. But when you li listen to that, right, Io, Jehovah, you know, it, it's there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so there's so much more. I mean, Holy mm -hmm. and I talk about this mm -hmm. all the time. You know, about, <laughs> and um, no, And only and us can handle each other because <laughs> we just go down that rabbit hole um, about. While we're crocheting. Yeah, while we're crocheting. You know, it is this. this depth of knowing. People mm -hmm. want to call it the sixth sense. Mm -hmm. They want to call it all these things. But it's keakua. Oh, yeah. 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 We didn't think, call it that, but oh, that's what it is. Yeah, I think yeah. for me, as I think about, you know, we think about Genesis 1, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And one of the first things that the Bible says that God gave us the ability to do, um, well, you know, it depends what translation you read, but it says he gave us dominion, or he gave us the ability to be caretakers of his creation. And then you think about the story of the people of Hawaii and how did they survive for hundreds of years before anybody, quote unquote, came and discovered Hawaii. Right? They, they did it because they were good caretakers of the system that they were given. And so even though it wasn't, as Kalani was saying, it wasn't a formalized thing that we, that we had words for what they were doing, they just did it because that's, that's what they knew. That's mm -hmm. they knew in their know that this is how we survive as people. Um, yeah. Amen. Kalamai, uh, totally kako of what you've already affirmed, what we know. I was thinking, um, you know, we have about ten minutes, um, mm. so fast, yeah. <laughs> so we won't get to that question that we planned on answering. But I did want the, you know, because the Holy Spirit is is present, and we talked a lot today. <clears throat> Um, earlier today, what you didn't see off camera was our Kahu had conversation and in another assignment and um, little kuka kuka session and video filming, talked about how we, the calling to comfort ho olu olu one another when there is crisis, when there is great loss in our lives. And that's something that we all are not stranger to, especially now, right, with the great loss. Uh, passing of loved ones, friends, and although it's a it's a part of life, it seems the last two years has been even more trying and challenging on every one of us. And so our kahu uh, brought hope and uh, um, comfort in their words of wisdom, which is God's words of wisdom through them. So maybe I thought, since that's still prevalent on our hearts, uh, we can speak to that. You know, how is it? How are we called as Hawaiian Christian, as OEV? to malama, to aloha one another, especially when we, any of us, are in times of need and loss and sadness in our lives. And maybe I thought, maybe our kahu in the last few minutes we have, you could share some of that. Um, and I want to thank um, those of you who are um, placing uh, and, and sharing your inquiry too in the chat as well. Um, I just wanted to share this one comment I see here. Uh, mahalo, uh, Kayla Ehia. Uh, affirming that the relationship with him, with Keakua, was already cultivated for all that you folks said. Mm -hmm. She's affirming that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I also want to uh, mahalo our, our dear friend Eden, who you might, uh, who's joining us and would have been our facilitator today, but she's watching from Moloka Inuya Hina Ea. Aloha Eden, our sister. And she reminds us, um, as you ponder and think about the, the comforting, from Romans 1, 19 and 20, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. And Mahalo, and we speak to our people. And so, with that in mind and with this closing thought of, you know, um, Ho'olu olu, showing aloha malama for one another. Any kahu want to begin that uh, closing remarks on that? 
And keep in mind, we have maybe Elima Minuke. <laughs> Elima me Elima. Umi. Yeah, well, I guess for us as Nakahu, it's about always being there for our people. Mm. Uh, grief is, is common to all, and we all go through losses. Uh, it might be the loss of a loved one, might be the loss of a pet, or loss of a home, as I shared earlier, one of our Hamana, uh, two of our Hamana, say family, <clears throat> lost their home, lost everything, lost all their memories. Um, and we need, just need to be there to walk alongside of them. And uh, as his agents here on our campuses, as his uh, professional agents, I mean, we're all called to care. We just gotta be there and, and support them. Um, so as Nakahu, we just wanna make sure that all of you know that we are, we are here to support you in whatever time of loss that you're going through. So please feel free to reach out to us and, and let us know your concerns and you know, we'll make, make sure that we have the opportunity to connect with you. Mahalo. Yeah. Anyone else wanna to add to that? Exactly what Kahu Kalani just mentioned. We all talked about it and, and we could go on and on because <laughs> we really are those uh, hands and feet of Jesus to come in and uh, there's that you know, just to bless people uh, because um, that's who we are. And so when people are in mourning, uh, we're there to comfort. And uh, not just us, but everybody. It's, it's a kako thing. We move together in the, in the spirit of the living Lord and uh, just come alongside and, and weep when they weep, laugh oh, yeah. when they laugh. Weep again, and you know it goes back and forth like the tide in and out. Mm -hmm. But we're in concert with that, yeah. and uh, we're in unity with that. Yeah. And it just um, displays God's marvelous handiwork within us, as uh, was uh, was uh, what we heard in Romans. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, by the way. Yeah, mm -hmm. that kind of nailed it. You should have just started with that one. Mahalaya <laughs> Eden, <laughs> yeah, for answering the Holy Spirit. Ew. Okay, <laughs> you see, the Holy Spirit said, this is so good, Here, we need more, more time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, <laughs> you know, and then that's good. Kau, grab your pillar because we we have a request to He many hai pule kakoke olu olu. Yeah, mahalo oh Mary, God. Mary Lee Watson, mahalo for the invitation to He many. Because, you know, and one of the ways Kahu speaks about, you know, just be there, be present when others need comfort. And uh, one of the things I appreciate about, about you, Kahu, is that sometimes it means just you come in the hall at your home, you pull in, but sometimes even before that, just bring your pila and just himeni, and then that brings, calls them all into that, maybe a familiar himeni. We sang earlier this morning that one, you know that one. Let's, I know that maybe one. I think we sing that one again. <laughs> and you know, Kahu was alluding to, um, from the Beatitudes, right? Christ's instruction to his haumana then, and uh, he speaks to us even today in that simple verse in Matayo, mm -hmm. Elima, uh, Pauku Eha, yeah? Mm -hmm. Po mai ka ikapo e e uana, no kamea, e ho olu olu yana lako, yeah? For they will be comforted, those who mourn. Mm -hmm. And so, we just mahalo, and we know we get more time, because we're gonna talk some more after this, or we may hear many poo. <laughs> but those of you out there, uh, mahalo for sharing your manau in the chat and your questions, but keep it coming, because we were told we had 15 minutes. We have 14 now. Okay. Okay, Kahu, lead us in the okay. Himeni. It will be a nice uh, segue. Oh, yeah. Maybe uh, to wind it up. Should we go a little higher in the key? Was uh, it? I don't know. I, I don't know. That was Olu. Olu that was okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. G is yeah. good. G is good. Okay. Okay. G is good. Because God yeah. is good. God is good. God is good. <laughs> G. That's what G, G is for. G. Big G. Big G. <laughs> I request the one that makes me sound good. G <laughs> <laughs> then. G makes good. you good. Eke akua Nani ka mahao Nau no ihana Ka
up. Oh Lord, my God. A for Aqua. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> when I'm in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I love this part. I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder Thy power throughout The universe display Then sings my soul Then sings my soul <laughs> Grew up in the 70s, Kalapana, oh, yeah. you know, they were going off. Kalapana, country country. CK. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. with your contemporary yeah. Hawaiian Christian self. Ah, oh, that was so awesome. So awesome. You know, and that reminded me. So, yes, mahalo, everybody, for all your mahalo for throwing up your hearts. I mean, throwing out your hearts, not throwing it up. <laughs> yes, Liz, we do love Kalapana and CNK. Mahalo. <laughs> mahalo. <laughs> Affirmation from the, from the Hawaiian That's nation. Right <laughs> That's but right it's, okay. Yeah. it's okay. It's okay. Hey, <laughs> Meliana <laughs> Myers is too. Right? Uh, we'll introduce you to him. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Aloha, my tita Meliana Meyer is uh, joining us oh, as well. Aloha, aloha Meliana. Aloha. Aloha. Yes, mahalo Rodman Gary Ishmina since his mahalo. Who can nani on a leo? He says, we we'll give our praise to God. Thank you so much. You know, and uh, as we close out, there's a manao that we were kind of pondering and we were going to answer that question, but we're going to throw it out to you to think about it because I feel like um, here at uh, Kekulo Kamehameha, Kiakua is moving in this us in this area to think about it for our spiritual theme um, in the upcoming year, right, Kahu? We've not had this conversation about that spiritual theme yet, <laughs> but we know that God is moving us. And because Manu, it fell off of his lips just right. a moment ago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Genesis 1-1, one, one, you know, God, and God gave us dominion in Genesis 1. Kinohi, uh, man, dominion over all his creation. We sang about the beauty of his creation right there. And, you know, that word and the word and the mahalo to Ekela for reminding and bringing this to our attention. In our um, Paipala, our kupuna uses that word dominion. The, the word that they chose is so perfect, and that is ho'oali'i or no ho'oali'i. Mm -hmm. And as we serve and ali'i trust, and we think about the mission of Keali'i Pawahi and her aina, the aina of her kupuna that we, that we steward and that we are part of this trust today in the work we do, <laughs> Yes, thank you. Five minutes, we got to <laughs> wrap it up. But here's the question, yeah, to all of you to ponder on because uh, as time moves on here at Kamehameha, we're going to think about that. And perhaps our leader, we're going to pray on this and our leaders too, is how are we using our aina? And it's this question here. Is the idea and the concept of aloha aina, malama aina, is this also a Christian concept? Yeah, is that something that we only as Hawaiians believe, malama aina? Or is that 
that biblical? I think we answered that question already. Because <laughs> Genesis 1 tells us, you guys, you steward, you have dominion, you malam on this aina, so it be fruitful and that your people will flourish. So we have to take that to heart and mind, and I think our leaders will listen to that Holy Spirit that will be guided by you folks. Yeah. So any comments to that as we close? You're going to get four minutes now. So I have a quick comment. Kind of quick comment. Good try. Good try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's important for us to remember. You know, the thing is, there's a Western concept of, of dominion, dominion. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. and yeah. and then there's the Hawaiian concept of ali'i, mm -hmm. and that's very different, right? Yeah. Because the kuleana of the ali'i is not to lord yeah. over their people, yeah. but to make sure that their people yeah. flourish, yeah. that the aina yeah. is fertile, that it produces, it's productive. And so it's a very different perspective of, of royalty. You know, when you think of Ali or, or kings and queens, there's this kind of I sit here and you sit there. But when you think of Hawaiian Ali, and this is why it's important to know our culture, because as Hawaiians, we know our Ali, good Ali, worked alongside their people. They were thinking about their people all the time. How are they flourishing? How are they being productive? And so they, they set up a couple system that was going to make sure that they were going to be productive, that there was a time to do this, a time to do that. Those who could have this, those who could have that. These things, there were rules in place. Another Old Testament kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's there's laws. There's, there's a way to live so that everybody can be pono. Mm -hmm. And in harmony and in balance, so very Hawaiian, right? Those are things that make us culturally, you know, viable and and you know, ikaika because we have those kinds of things in place. So don't misunderstand the word, you know, in Hawaiian. And that's one of those things where you read it in the English, everybody loses their mind. Oh my gosh, do you know do I have dominion over the land? That's not that's not what God wants. He wants us to ali'i this land, hoali'i this land. Yeah, and I think that's part and parcel to who we are as a people, right? I mean, the yeah, in the English, the word is dom dominion, and mm -hmm. there's yeah an entirely different concept when you really think about yeah. the way that we are good stewardships, stewards of mm -hmm. of the aina. Uh, that looks a whole lot different, but it really lines up more. With, I mean, Jesus could have done anything he wanted to to save the world, and yet he chose to humble himself uh, and to serve others, um, and and that's really what's captured, I think. Amen. Mahalo, well said. And I want to, I wanna, it brings to heart and mind what we see happening in this world today, yeah, where we see nations uh, and the rumors of war and nations uh, coveting other nations for this idea of having dominion, right? So I think the world can use our kuana ike as Hawaiians, yeah? Our idea and understanding of what it means to be a ruler in Ali'i by God's definition of that, Kekua's definition. And then I think aloha will permeate and save the world. And I think our kupuna knew that for long. Remember the mantra of Kahu Abraham Akaka of Kauaihao Church over here? It always was for all his life, aloha keakua. God is love. He aloha keakua, as the scriptures tell us. And so with that, we close our time. And we just aloha and mahalo all of you. Mahalo to um, all the committee of today's beautiful summit. Kavaivai no na kupuna. That you have called us together um, to be together. And it's always... A pleasure to sit alongside God's favorite, <laughs> the Punahele of Kiakua, in our kahu and all of We all Punahele. Yeah, we <laughs> all are Punahele. Ah, oya. And uh, ekolu mea nui makahu nua. Mahalo for your request for that. He many. <laughs> we're going to save that for the series two in the summer. I feel like it's going to become a series here. And we shall be back again. So we just uh, leave you with God's blessings. Na Kiakua e kia i malama. Amen. 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 Amen.